Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so glad to be bringing God's truth to you today. <laughs> Praise God. Oh, glory to God. Can we call for that daily bread for today before going to today's word? Father, join me as we declare. Say, Father, I demand and I receive my daily bread. It's coming to me now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Wow. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Now, I know what I'm sharing with you, what I began to share with you yesterday is so important. Very important. And I need you to pay close attention and take the necessary action because this is the time to take action. I was telling you that I'm at peace. Oh, so much at peace. And you also know why I said that. Now, so the Lord was dealing with me concerning what happened, what transpired between the, the, the APC primaries and now. Now someone say, are you saying God is a party man? He's not a party man, but he chooses, he's, he has chosen who he wants to choose. So if the person belongs to a party, is the person he's focusing on. Not even the party. Of course, the party is a vehicle. But he's not choosing a president that will become and be a party man. He's choosing a president that will bring justice to every man in the nation. That's what God is concerned about. And remember, I told you, God is concerned about the tilting of our nation. So now, if you don't understand destiny and purpose, you will not understand what I'm talking about. All, if you, all you can think about is politics. You will not understand what I'm talking about. We are not talking. This is, has nothing to do with politics. But it has everything to do with God's agenda. But in fulfilling God's agenda, politics gets involved. See that now? So, so the Lord was speaking to me how he's not happy with the church. And especially, like the Lord said, the redeemed Christian church of God. Why the redeemed Christian? Because the vice president is not just a member. He is a solid part of that ministry. And God, like I said, I told you yesterday, God said, this is the reason I set them up. This is the reason I multiplied them. All right, so while I was praying for mercy, like I was telling you yesterday, the Lord began to rebuke me. He said, Jonathan, when Jonathan stands in judgment, he's far better than all of you Christians in Nigeria who couldn't see the hand of the Lord and put aside your personal agenda and support what God wants to do. That's what the Lord said to me. Now, I have not even thought about that before. I mean, until the Lord said to me, I said, whoa, truly, this was a sacrifice Jonathan made. Now, when the Lord spoke to me, he said, you couldn't. And, 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 and this is the point. You see, people think, should the church get involved with politics or not? I'll tell you this. If the church gets involved in general politics, then the church is going astray. But if the church gets the mind of God and the Lord says, this is who I have ordained, and the church decides to line up behind that person and do everything to make that person succeed, the church is not joining politics, even though the church will play politics. You see that? Now, because we have known the mind. I'm not just saying somebody coming up to say, this is the mind of God. I say, oh, since is our pastor, what can we do? Let us know. I'm talking about everybody praying. If God has spoken, it will line up with your spirit. If It will only not line up if you don't pray. So it starts from prayers. It starts from prayers. Everyone who genuinely prayed knew the hand of God was upon the vice president. Genuinely, not people who know him, not people who are associated with him. Genuinely, Father, what is your thoughts concerning our nation? You see, now that's why I'm telling you from history. That's why I went back as 2014. See that? Now then. So the Lord began to say, you, you, you could not. Now the redeemed Christian church of God alone 
have the capacity to evangelize all the delegates that went for those primaries. They have the capacity. Now, when I mean capacity, not just financial capacity. I mean, think about it. Now, imagine every one of those delegates are not ghosts. They are not foreigners. They belong to a tribe. They belong to a local government. They belong to a village. Now, would it have been difficult to identify them immediately? I mean, even if it's one week to the primary. You identify every delegate. We have the missionaries to do so. Identify them, visit them, and try to convince them. Now, that's what God said. You couldn't evangelize 2,000 plus people. You couldn't evangelize them. Evangelize them doesn't mean, oh, you, not, you have to receive Jesus. Because some of them are Muslim. Some of them are belong to other religions. So God doesn't say you have to receive Jesus Christ. No, no, no. This is political evangelism. You know what God has said. You walk out to this person. Hey, you're a delegate. Yes, yeah, so hmm, that's what God has Okay, ah, praise God. Praise God for you. So what's your thoughts? Who are you voting for? Oh, no, no, no. Uh, the person that chose me as a delegate said, I must vote for this person. I said, so, but why? Don't you know the power? See, number one, the church should have been massively involved in uh, educating voters, educating delegates. The, the election doesn't start from PVC. Yes, it is important you have your PVC. But the election starts from the delegates. When they are, the delegates are being chosen, do we know how they are chosen? Now, even after they have chosen, what did we do in educating them? What do we do making them realize that that, as a daily, you are so powerful, more powerful than your governor? Because most times they fear that if they don't go the line of the governor, things are going to be bad for them. But you see, when you have the church, who is the who is God's um, pillar of truth, come in and tell you, listen, you choose. If you follow what your governor has said, but first of all, get their mind to accept what is right. And it was so simple. What do you have against my candidate? What do you have against our candidate? Tell, no, tell me. Is it competence? Compare competence with this your candidate. Is it strength? Is it ability? Is it righteousness? Talk to me. Now, when you get there, you know, most of you have yes, I know, I know, I actually, I think, I think in, among all these people, he's the best, you know. Now, you're not even going to what God has said. You're going to physical because you're dealing with their minds. Now. And then you say, you know what? But, you know, the, this is what they always come to. I know, I know it's the best of Kai. See, eh, the money that they are offering is too much and he cannot give us that kind of money. No problem. How much are they offering you? 5 million? 10 million? 15 million? If you collect 15 million from them, how long will it last? What will you do with it? But as a church, we are willing, if you do what is right, to take up the educational sponsorship of your children till the university. Now, you are trying to cushion up, see? Think about it. To go and collect the 15 million today. Or to be sure that if you do the right thing, number one, we're going to have good governance. So everything is going to start working well for even you. So you don't need someone to come and bribe you that money again. Number two, we are assuring you as a body that that is why they were spread out in the first place. To meet community needs. As a body, we are sure you will put ourselves together. We'll see to it that your children are educated till their university. Just follow your conscience. Wow. And there were so few. It would have been so easy. But the church couldn't. We left the vice president as an offer. We left him. We saw him as a politician. He was not a politician. He's still not a politician. It's on God's assignment. 
But here's the comforting words of the Lord. Because after having heard all this from the Lord, I began to pray. I said, Lord, this is... Now, I saw the weight. I'm there. This is not something that happened months ago. This is something that happened a few weeks ago. Not up to 20 days now. The Lord began to deal with me on this. So I began to pray. I said, Lord, I must confess. Even me didn't think of this. So you're going to judge everyone. And that's how you intercede. When you intercede with God, you put yourself in the picture first. Don't intercede for other people. If you are looking for mercy, you use yourself. I said, Lord, I didn't know this. I was praying, but this didn't come to me. Of course, I didn't have that kind of capacity. So I said, Lord, I didn't know this. So if you're going to blame anyone, blame me first. Maybe if I had known, I would have shouted. Maybe if I had known, I said, so Lord, please, have mercy on us. We have done wrong. Yes, we have done wrong. We have done wrong. Everybody knows. Everybody who's right in his mind knows that this next election is going to make Nigeria or is going to marry Nigeria. We know that. Is it that Nigeria starts shooting up or we start shutting down? We know. And these were the comforting words of the Lord. Ah, Thank you, Holy Spirit. See, I know he's merciful, but we don't take his mercy for granted. I said, the Lord spoke to me and said, listen, son. My own hand will bring the redemption of your nation. I will not need you to do it. (sighs) Lord, no. I agree that your hand will bring forth the redemption, but please, we need to be part of it. I said, Lord, we need to be part of it. Because why would you do something for us? Listen. It was so easy for God to bring the children of Israel out of Egypt. It was easy. He did it in one night. One night they were out of Egypt. But it was more difficult for them to enter into the promised land. Why? Because their hearts, their individual hearts were not ready, were not prepared to enter the promised land. If God is tilting our nation, the nation itself is, cannot tilt. It is the people that will tilt. So if the hearts of the people are not ready, how will the tilting be? If God says, I'm putting this man there, and your nation will begin to tilt in the right direction, this is what God said. I'm a witness to his word. I will never deny it. The question is, are we ready for our nation to tilt? Are we ready to see a good nation? One man cannot do it. We that name the name of the Lord, we have to wake up. And we have to begin to pray. Brothers and sisters, they all left Egypt. But only two from those who left Egypt were qualified to enter the promised land. Every one of them, God had to wait for them to die one after the other. He didn't kill them. He had to be patient. That's why they spent 40 years in the wilderness. 40 solid years. God was waiting. Because see the promise that it was a 40 days journey. 40 days journey. Every one of them would have entered. But God needed the condition of their hearts to be fit. To enjoy what is in the promised land. If not, they will get into the season of their promised land and mess things up. And the Lord spoke to me and said, I will give you another opportunity. I will give the church another opportunity. And what does that mean? We're going to do it again. I'll leave it like that. But this time around, the church must be ready. That's why I'm sharing this message I'm sharing with you. The church must get into the place of prayers. Deliberate prayers for Nigeria. Everybody that names the name of the Lord must be praying. Why should we all pray? 
so that the Spirit of God will begin to walk. We don't want to be like the Egyptians. So that when the Spirit of God begins to move politically now, because He will move politically, we will be in a better place, ready to do what God wants. And we will come out strong. And God's plan will be fulfilled in our nation. Not only to make the, the to choose the president and to make him get into that office, but also to build the nation of our dream. Every one of us must take responsibility. But it begins with prayer. It begins with prayer. Now that's why for us we've set up um, a, a prayer chain. And we, how do we do it? Like I told you, we did that the first time. And then we're doing it again. On their Zoom. Now, there's a website showing on your screen. You can go to that website and register if you want to join our team of praying people. Now, you can form your own. The most important thing is pray. Pray. And the Lord said, look, you've got to start praying round the clock, round the clock, round the clock. So we, we, we set up this website and then you register, you choose your time. If your time is not available, you'll be informed that your time is not available. So you choose another time. We want to get people praying around the clock every day, every day. Now it's simple. You just choose one hour to pray. Just, your only just one hour to pray. Why is it one hour? One hour is, is long enough. I mean, I mean, I mean, long is short. But it's long enough for the Spirit of God to begin to move on your heart. That's why the Lord said, just one hour. Just one hour. Because now we're doing this corporately. So he, he himself will do a quick walk in us. And you know what I'm saying? So we're praying one hour. You choose your timing. Join the link. When, 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 when is your time or when you're free, just log into the um, Zoom room. And you will hear people pray. Or you can pray yourself. Praise God. Just, just let's pray. And, and pray, and pray, and pray. And there's another angle to this, which has to do with the earth, the angels. Now, I'll spare you all those, all those parts. But hey, listen. If we will just pray. Now, this is the truth. Whether we pray or not, God's going to do his work. He's, he's assured me that. That that is the reason for my peace. He's assured me that. But, let's not drag. Let's not be foolish like the Egyptian, the, the Israelites that came out of Egypt. Let's not be that foolish. Let us prepare our hearts to enter into our own promised land as a nation. We are the people of this nation. God placed us here for a reason. And the time has come for us to take our nation and cause it to fulfill the destiny that God has ordained for it. This is not a Christian thing. This is Christians practicing nationhood. This is Christians taking up responsibility for the betterment of everybody. Listen, let these words tear you up in your heart. Get involved. Let's change our nation. We can change it from the place of prayer. People say, eh, you pray too much. Listen, it is in the place of prayer. Ideas come to us. What I just shared with you about winning, evangelizing, every delegate came from the place of prayer. Now, given the opportunity, wisdom has come to we will know what to do. We will know what to do. I pray that the Lord strengthen your heart tonight, today. I pray that the Holy Spirit open your eyes to see his truth. I pray that the Lord mold in you the character that will help you succeed in life, even with him. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray for you that you will not be deceived or misled by the evil one, but that your heart will be strengthened and filled with courage to see the word of God come to pass in your life and in our nation. Be strengthened. Be strengthened. Be strengthened. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Log on to the website. Wherever you are listening to please help me share this message. Don't keep this message to yourself. Share it as wide as you can. And let's change our nation. Because the change surely is coming. 
God bless you. I'll see you on Monday. Bye-bye.